I know he's going to be going off to college pretty soon. Finally finished high school, the bum. What is this, graduating high school at 18? <laughs> but regardless, he's gonna be moving into this game right away. Pokemon Trainer versus Pikachu. Now, this matchup is, I have not seen a lot of it, actually. Um, Pikachu kind of a character that a lot of hype for the game first came out, but kind of fell off over time. Pikachu's always that character that's really, really good, but like not a lot of people play because he's actually very difficult. But Joe Pone has been playing this character for a long yeah. time. And oh, this is one thing that Pikachu excels at. The offstage game, his recovery is so good. His just there's so many angles that Pikachu can get to his opponent and also return from. Oh, what a cool switch. When Charizard, I think he's the first shield poke. The thunder still connecting through the flare blitz. He is weak to thunder, so maybe not uh, maybe not that unusual. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, being stuck in Charizard can kind of be tricky. He has a much bigger frame, which means moves like that neutral are going to be easier to land. Going oh uh, No, he worked so hard for that, and he was doing so, so well. Yeah, I like the idea where you want to just like wait out the invincibility. It's like, let me just, let's not interact. I, I, I would not, I would still disagree. If you're facing down an Ivysaur, don't even entertain the possibility that he's just going to down it through the stage. Nah, you're fast enough. You can avoid it. it Bonkai's timing with that down air is so good. I don't mean that. I mean, like, you can get around quick enough where he won't be able to catch up. He could have. Uh, if he thinks you're going to go to the other side, he can just run to the other side and go for it. I'm just saying that uh, I think it's an okay idea, and definitely I see the merits to it. But there's the inherent risk involved in, you know, technical error of messing it up. And then also... Oh well, you God, have to, you definitely have to have faith in your ability to do it. Oh, I think he was looking for a Thunder, but Bankai's positioning was just really tricky. And now Bankai has him on the ledge, not able to get that Thunder follow-up, meaning that and this is the point where Pikachu can really struggle to kill. Even Up Smash was not enough to do it. The bigger ceiling on Battlefield helping out Bankai quite a bit. And since he's saying Ivysaur here, one tiny mistake can lead to so much damage. Let's see. Oh, tried to go for a read there, I guess, expecting some type of mash option. Really good from Chopo not to give it to him. But he needs to clean this stock up right away. 145%, that's a lot, but Pikachu can struggle to kill. Oh, the eating through the armor. Another neutral air to down smash. That's the second time he's gotten that. Really good from Joe Pone. He's not too far behind. And I want to just iterate for a moment that this would be a really big win for Joe Pone. I don't think he's ever beaten Bankai, and he's doing really well for himself right now. Things are getting a little tricky. This Squirtle has been racking up damage, but if he can just survive, we haven't seen a completed edge guard yet, and one of those, I mean, it changes the entire nature of the game, but he's getting close to that 100% mark, which, dang, Squirtle down tilt does a lot of damage. All right, another, oh. Just a little bit high on that side B, which meant that that down smash was Squirtle absolutely able to connect. That entire last stock was actually played with Bankai Squirtle, which is impressive. A lot of Pokemon trainers, you know, they'll play Squirtle at the lower percents then switch to Ivysaur, uh, you know, to clean up stocks. Yeah, no, I, I kind of think longer. it's more, when you're first thing, like, when you're facing against, like, fast characters, going Ivysaur is kind of like a double-edged sword, because you're just like, uh, all of my moves are really slow, and I can't catch up with them, and but like the they can rush time, me down. But at the same time, when you have stage positioning advantage, like you can't though, because they're faster than you. Well, no, like Pikachu, like at this, at, like yeah, at, but that's what I'm saying. Like when you're tilt. Squirtle, like you can just like you can, you catch up to them, so it doesn't matter. Like you know, I have center stage, come and do them, anything. Once you hit them off the stage, you know. Well, no, because they still have like options. But Ivysaur, in what I'm just saying is that Ivysaur's hitboxes help cover more of those options as long as you have the time to switch to him. And then if you miss, then you have to go to Charizard and then back to Squirtle. You have, you're risking a lot in that situation. I mean, I can definitely, yeah, I understand that. But at the same time, a lot of... Game two. Are, I mean, I think it's worth So, Joe Pone uh, decided to go to town and city. Uh... 
I guess I kind of like I get the idea where you're gonna have like more space. You know, Bankai did get rid of the FDs, so this is like I guess like the next best chance you're gonna have. Um, and yeah, you just want to be able to like try and get around him. Oh, good job reading the uh, the switch right there. We're actually able to punish with the thunder. Jokun has kind of been missing that for the past few. Oh, really smart awareness. Recognizing just how much lag Jokun was in and able to connect the flare blitz to... Whoa, that almost killed him. Is he dead? He might die here. Like, this is absolutely horrifying if you're Pikachu. I think another Nair down smash is probably Jokun's best bet. Even up smash not able to finish him off. Yeah. Okay, he is off stage with only one jump. Oh. I respect the idea for going for Flare Blitz in kind of like a Hail Mary situation, but with a character that's so s small and fast, like, Jopon isn't also, like, committing to anything really hard there, so... Also, uh, I want to commend Bankai's ability to get... There's, like, this really nice shield pressure that Jopon has been acting on, like, enacting, but Bankai's just been recognizing the holes. I've seen him jump out of those uh, pressure situations quite a bit, which is super hard to do, especially with Charizard. All right, finally the stock is going to be, stock number one is going to be cleaned up. But now there's two more for Jopon to go. I think he's going to need some big uh, edge guard at the very least to give him the momentum to finish the set because his posture, if you look at the way he's positioned, is just totally different between here and game one. Yeah, this is going to be really tough because now you have to like build up. When you have stock advantage and you're able to like match the, 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 the tempo of your character, Although, Jobone's actually doing a really good job because uh, Bankai's like go holding in on him trying to land and it's just like getting him to juggle. So, opting to just let come down with uh, Ivysaur. Uh, you have like better landing options because like Nair can be a little bit trickier or, or at worst, so, like you'll trade with it. Hey! Oh, we got to give it good angle and actually going to survive all of that onslaught. But if you notice, one of the problems with Pikachu, yes, his combo game is really solid, but his damage output is. It's like one step below, it's one step above Sheik. Uh, where like, he hit him so many times with like 17 up airs, and Ivy Soul connected four hits maybe, and pretty much evened it up. Oh, uh, there it is, messing up the angle at the very end. Jopon putting on a really good show, that game one was super close, but Bankai is gonna be the one moving on into women's bracket. And I think next up we're gonna have uh, HO3K Dill versus BOW, aka BOW.